Welcome to No Tell Nerds, episode 20. On my right, we have the only man who saw Suicide Squad twice and lived to tell about it. <laughs> I'm Nick. And then next and to I'm him, we, and next to him, we have our resident comic book guru. Um, I'm Nick. And our very own Muggle-born wizard. Denora. And then we, and then me, I am that gamer that's always poning your mom. And then we, <laughs> and then we have our, our host, our Josh Whedon, and hopefully this is Firefly and Dot Dot House. <laughs> So yeah, so Vox will cancel us any minute now. Um, and Matt, <laughs> all right, and cool. Bring us back. Yes. Probably back yeah. <laughs> and then and cancel us again, and then we'll air, end up on Comedy Central at some point. Yeah. <laughs> and today we're talking summer movies. What worked, what didn't, and how much longer Star Wars is. And of course, we have our audio guy, Aaron. Special thanks to him. Thank you for helping us out. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Let's all shout in our mics and thank Aaron. <laughs> He'll appreciate that. Twenty episodes down, and we still haven't got this intro right. But one day we will. So to the guests again, we're talking summer movies. What worked, what didn't, what we were expecting, and what we got, and how much longer until Star Wars. <laughs> all right, so that's all that I'm and waiting the for. Is yeah. So long. Yeah. So long. <laughs> I mean, you know, technically we only have till December till a Star Wars story, but yeah, but I could but, be dead by then. <laughs> that's a long time wait. Yeah. <laughs> you might have to see Suicide Squad again, so who knows oh, what will happen? Oh no, 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 <laughs> no, no. He needs to buy it on Blu-ray and then watch it every time. You want. Yeah. <laughs> From the safety of his own. Put it on the background. Back I'll play it backwards. It's okay. <laughs> There's a reason that loop button is on that DVD. Yeah. <laughs> That's for Suicide Squad. Not just for children. Yeah. <laughs> and Nick. <laughs> <laughs> playing Pokemon Go as we speak. Yeah. <laughs> Always playing Pokemon Go. That's, that's a given with you guys, right? Pokestop while you're driving, yeah. while you're you know operating heavy machinery. While you're trespassing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Every warning I have violated. <laughs> <laughs> Many times over. <laughs> all right. So Denora, I believe, was the one that wrote out all the movies for the summer. And she kind of did some of the late work. So I'll let her kind of lead off the topic here. So basically, when I went and looked at 2016 and film kind of started in May, and uh, I'm going to just start off right with that saying, as I went through the list of movies, which I've seen a decent amount, uh, they're not great, and uh, that's kind of the theme of the summer, is just uh, disappointment, in my opinion. Uh, we kind of peaked with Civil War, uh, and it, it went a little downhill from there. there six days in the summer, we peaked. Exactly. Nice. So, um, <laughs> I mean, it's definitely never said that. Exactly. Uh, I mean, we've, we've all seen, I'm, seen, I'm sure we've seen movies throughout the year, and I don't know if there's anything that's top Civil War for you guys. Uh, I can only name one other movie, which I will plug uh, immensely throughout this, which should be uh, Hell or High Water. It's a great movie, great film. Uh, it's modern western. It's amazing. And that's the only other movie that I can actually say that about uh, just because this year. I don't know if you guys have had that same feeling. Or I didn't see that movie, so I... Yeah, Civil War is just of the year. Just of the year. Civil War is definitely the Summer, the, the peak, I guess you would say. And after that, it was kind of downhill. And I remember, I think it was last year or two years ago. Me and you were religiously going to movies. Yep. And I believe on my Facebook feed, you're still the only one doing that. Everyone kind of trailed off. I, I try to go every Tuesday. I do like little five dollar Tuesdays. I do try. It's gotten hard. It's it's like you know, and it's like five dollars, and you, I'm just sitting in the theater, just like wasting my life. But, what um, else can I be doing with this $5? Exactly. <laughs> it's like 10 tacos right there. <laughs> and I think I keep going in hopes that I'm going to see something really good. And it really hasn't happened this year. I don't know if it's just Hollywood's ideas. Like, there's a lot of remakes, there's a lot of reboots, there's a lot of unnecessary. I felt like the last, like, six years before this was, like, the year of the remake, the year of the reboot. And then, like, this year, it's just like, I, I don't know how it could get any worse, aside from just remaking the movies that came out last year. I mean, well, this is the year of the reboot. Reboot, <laughs> the reboot and remake that no one asked for. Yeah. Exactly. They, they made a lot of things that, like at least with Ghostbusters, you had a fan base, and I can see you're, you're, you you wanting to, to try to make money off of that. But like you got things like Ben Hur, I, I don't see a fan club of Ben Hur being like, I hope they remake that movie. Yeah, they play it every year, but they play it every year because of like what it stood for. It's like the yeah. Charlie Brown like Christmas. It's just a thing that happens. You know, in the winter or in uh, you know Easter, whatever the hell they play Benner. But <laughs> exactly. yeah, yeah. But like, why? I mean, to make a, a religious epic out of Noah, some like you know crazy battle. Like, uh, okay, fine. You want to you want to retell the story, but Ben Hur's been done, right? Like, what do we really need the crazy big budget version of Ben Hur? Let's let Charlton Heston yes. and like let's leave it there. <laughs> yeah. Damn it, we do. Uh, we have Jason Bourne. Jason Bourne. Which, dragon. 
guess, um... That's another one, man. Yeah, we, Pete, do we need those? No. Pete's Dragon was amazing when I was yeah. a kid, watching it all the exactly. time. Yeah. I don't understand great. why they would make it. I mean, now we got, like, CG, so they could do it. I see the reason why, not necessarily, like, they need to, but I can see, like, why they would do that instead of, like, Ben-Hur. That makes sense. That makes more sense to me. Than, you know, Tarzan? Yeah. I mean, Ghostbusters could have... That could have been number three. It could have been a continuation. You know, they could have easily... No, that's a dumb idea. Easily <laughs> con- have been a continuation... But to go and reboot stuff, I'd, uh, that's the thing. I'd rather see it same universe continuations yeah. of these stories, a part three or something like that 20 years later, I think would be much better than to try and, and do a rehash of an old movie. That said, I haven't seen Ghostbusters yet. With Ghostbusters, I'll say when I saw it, there was a promise. And I think yeah. it kind of reflects the theme of this this summer is the movie, there's there's good dialogue, there's jokes, it has that, but the plot just falls apart. It, it doesn't deliver. So you get to the last section of the movie and you're kind of like, all right, we're doing this really, really mediocre action. It's not doing a whole lot. There's good in it there's good parts but the whole movie you, you left going well it was okay and then you kind of have to dumb it down and go well I guess if I'm just eating popcorn and I'm just sitting there it's, it's okay it's okay wasn't it the same director as Ant-Man no it was Paul Feig so um, the same director as like Bridesmaids he can do he can do like like he did Bridesmaids he, um, he can do Spy I think he can do human driven comedy but when it gets supernatural when it gets graphics oriented that's where it just falls apart in action, you have directors who can't really direct action, and you're supposed to be like, all right, I'm watching this on a giant screen. It's just not, it's not that yeah. enjoyable. I mean, part of it's got to be, you know, it is that fan base, that emotional tie to I, that I have as, as a kid watching this movie that's totally going to skew any kind of good or bad job they might may have done, that I'm going to be looking at it through this lens, just because it is tied to that item. You know, I mean, we're, we're talking about this movie that came out in July, but even going back to May, X-Men Apocalypse, uh, yeah. like, I mean, talk about, like, pulling, pulling on on some heartstrings of like that, I mean that's that's totally my, my childhood wrapped up right there is like that X-Men 90s comic of like every day you know after school whatever watching it like Saturday morning like that was it that was you know awesome and so to go in like I had such high hopes such high expectations for X-Men and it met them? Uh, it did not no it, it did not I'm sorry you disappointed you? that's crazy yeah. are you saying you messed up again? Yeah. <laughs> I, I love the bold choice to put in a joke about third, third movies yes to put in that oh, joke right. of third movies and just literally said like thinking that you know not only if you to last last stand was it? Yeah, because he bailed on that yeah, too. Yeah, he bailed, and like, and then and then to say like, oh, I'm gonna be so much better, and then it falls so flat. And suddenly his third X Men movie yeah. falls apart. Yeah, it falls so flat. And um, Jubilee got short changed. I I don't know why you have her in there so much, and if you don't have her do anything at all, she, she could have like stunned somebody at some point. You know, I want to see her blow up an arcade machine. Yeah. You know, just something. I mean, Jubilee's pretty useless as a mutant, but like. There could have been something, some use of her power somewhere in there, right? She becomes a vampire. She becomes a vampire. Yeah. Any, uh, what's your guys' least favorite movie of the ones that you saw? Let me bring up that list. Actually, when you went to it. I didn't like Suicide Squad. But you know what? I'd say out of big blockbuster kind of superhero films, I didn't like it. Um, it really didn't deliver for me. I know you guys talked about it last time and you read my points. They, they still stand. Um, but honestly, I've seen so many bad comedies this year. And a lot of it's like I go with my family and I'm like, oh, they're going to enjoy this. You know, I'll take them. And I just sit there like wallowing, like, why? And everybody around me is laughing and I just don't get it. Um, but I mean, there's movies like Central Intelligence. I saw it. I like The Rock. I think he's a cool guy. He's got charisma. But it just wasn't that great. And Kevin Hart was very Kevin Hart. And then. <laughs> what? Kevin Hart was playing Kevin Hart in Kevin Hart movie? Kevin Hart was just extremely Kevin Hart. And I, I don't know how I feel about that. Um, is Kevin Hart the new Chris Rock? No, because no. Rock is coming back. Oh, he's he's coming back. Yeah. He's oh. Chris Tucker. Yeah, he's a, he is the new Chris Tucker. I mean, I do like Kevin Hart in, in dope, small dope. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, you make small jokes. It's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But when he's like the main character, I just kind of sat there going, uh, I can't do this movie. Um, but I and then. 
I think actually my le one of my least favorites was The Secret Life of Pets. Yeah. Oh, was it good? I wanted to watch that. I, th I think you'd be really surprised at, at the list I have here of oh, no, best it made, movies. It made a lot of money too. It made a lot of money. And uh, I just, I think, and I, don't, and I hate to compare all animated movies to Pixar. I don't want to be that person. But I think in this day and age, but I am. exactly, but. exactly. But in this day and age, I think animated films—they they have to have an emotional core. They have to be something that kids and adults can both enjoy. If you hope to appease a broad audience, it, it was very kids-oriented. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say something that some people don't agree with, but I don't like Minions. And, uh, what? I'm not a fan. I, yeah. No, I can't stand that. Okay, all right. I'm, I'm really glad that, right. that we can talk about this openly because sometimes I can't. <laughs> You're I in a safe place. place. <laughs> oh my god, it's totally a safe place because. I hate happy feet. Yeah. Oh, no, you don't like this. Like, this guy's like, episode is derailed <laughs> quick. Yeah. Yeah. So much. Minions. Happy feet? Happy feet. And the Lego movie. You hate oh, the Lego movie. movie. I hate oh, the Lego movie and happy feet. And I understand that I am the only person that does. Aaron Cutting Mike. Just like that. Just like that. Without the uh, expletive on the other episode, I feel like this whole part's got to get just, cut just out Just like here. that, that there's penguin, gonna be riots in the street. Exactly. Just like that penguin in Happy Feet staring at his own reflection in that thing. I was just wondering why, why do people like this movie? They're I think I've seen cuteness done better and funnier ways. Well, back to minions. Okay. I'm just gonna keep moving on with my point <laughs> there and agree. how they're annoying. I thought this and was they're a safe not, place. Yeah. They're not funny. I'm talking to my safe place. They're not <laughs> funny. And um, the Secret Life of Pets is made by the same people who made the minions. And you would know because they opened up with a minion short. That's not funny. Kids behind me thought it was hilarious. I did not. Uh, and then uh, we go into Secret Life of Pets, just kind of like people said it was like Toy Story, but it was kind of just. It was it was crude in a weird way, and Kevin Hart plays a bunny, and Kevin Hart plays Kevin Hart playing a bunny, yeah. which was kind of funny. Um, but that kind of tells you he was the best part of that movie, so I don't know. But um, I, I just didn't like it at all because it just didn't have that emotional that core. I'm used to seeing that, and I think Pixar has kind of spoiled me because even in their not great movies. Uh, yeah, so uh, I don't know. I, I just think that I'm spoiled now. So I expected more out of an animated movie. And it was great for kids. I feel like if I was 10 or younger, I would have loved it. But it was actually one of my more disappointing movies. Well, I, for me, it was, I hate to say this, but it was Ghostbusters. Yeah. Like most of, <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> I'm deemed a sexist. No, it was just bad filmmaking, bad editing, bad directing, bad story. The acting I like, but that's it. Like the actors and actresses could not save the film. Yeah. Mine was uh, the only the third movie I've walked out on. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Really? I, I didn't walked see out that. halfway through. Yeah. Uh, 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 the first movie I walked out on was Godzilla, the first American remake. I walked out on that one. Um, and I think I was ten at the time. I was a very angry ten year old. I threw popcorn through everything. I was like, no. Liking it, it, it as it a was child. So horrifying. So horrifying. The best part of that movie was all the uh, Simpsons uh, cameos in there. That's all yeah. I enjoyed, yeah. I, yeah. I, so I, I ducked out of that. Um, the second movie I can't remember, but it was like one of those that came out for Starship Troopers that tried to capitalize on it. It was one of those after I was like, no. wait, hold on. You walked out of Starship Troopers? No, one of the ones that came after the success oh. of Starship Troopers. Oh, it was like so a, it was a, a, it was a another parody, like, parody oh. ripoff thing. Was it Starship Troopers 2? <laughs> no, it was. That was right it. it was like something strange. It could have been. It could have been something, but. Yeah, so the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I walked out halfway through. I see that. Not, it, I mean, at least the first one, I could see why it was somewhat entertaining. The second one was just way too, just dull. I, I've seen the cartoon mm -hmm. movies that they've come up with from the series, and those are way better than that. It was just too much. And talking about, like, a, a thing that doesn't explain anything. It just, just says, well, this is this. And they don't explain how they know that. They, you just got to take your word for it. Or I guess you have to watch the cartoon religiously to know what's up. But they really don't help anyone along. If your parents don't sit along with you for that new Nickelodeon cartoon, you have no idea what's going on, who these people are, or where they're popping up from. And it just was so poorly done and so unamazing that I just left about halfway through. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah, pretty bad. Yeah, I think I saw about one movie a month for the summer that what we're looking at, the May to August, and uh, I'd say Independence Day might have been my least favorite of the, the five that I saw. I don't know. I, like is a strong word. I went into, <laughs> I went into Independence Day looking for something. 
It's like watching Freddy vs. Jason. It's like that was the problem. No, I'm not. No, no, it's like I'm going to see Freddy vs. Jason to see Freddy vs. Fight Jason. I don't give a crap what happens in there. That's what I want to see. And they deliver so I'm cool. I want to Independence Day not to have a plot line, not to have anything, just to see stuff blow up. And now they blew up, and I enjoyed it blowing up. That's and so so I wouldn't see it again. But it was I went in there knowing what it was, and I wasn't. Um, Disappointed with what I got because I knew where it was. Lame jokes and, and things blowing up. More explosions. More explosions. I don't know if you guys do that either, but like, you know, I wanted to go and just see explosions and lame jokes, and I thought it was funny. And I think the thing with this summer, you have to do that with like almost every movie now. You have to be like, well, I don't know, I'm not going to go in with expectations. And that, I think you can only do that for so long. You can only go to, like, see, even if you see a movie a month, you can only, like, wait a certain amount of time before you're like, can I get something, like, just good, consistently good, like that has a good overall plot and dialogue and acting, just, mm -hmm. just, just too good. Much yeah. I mean, like, I just want good, yeah. and, and it's been tough this year. No, I'm, I'm in the same position as Matt. I saw, like, maybe a handful of movies, <laughs> uh, and I'm okay with that. I, like, it'd be like, oh, it's Tuesday, I'm gonna go see movies, like, eh, I can do something else, and I'm gonna choose to do something else, I'm not gonna go back and watch them, so... Does something does something stop you guys from going, or or is it just no no trailers that were like let's go? I just wasn't I wasn't just, feeling it. There was nothing that yeah, was like yeah, I want to see that. That's the thing I need to go see. It's just a lack of interest. I didn't feel like if there's a movie that I felt like I needed to see, then I would go. But other than that, it's like oh, it'd be kind of cool to see. But then it's like come up and be like you know, I'm all right. yeah. Right. I mean, I was I was there like you know the fir first couple of days for Civil War, for X Men, right. for Star Trek, for right. Independence Day. Like I, I went the first weekend to go see these right when they came out and. and just let down by most of them, yeah. but not Star Trek though. Star Trek, I think they finally got it. It took them three three tries, but they finally figured it out. See, I like the first one, and I, and I, and I know it's. I, I, I'm reading online and discussion. It's kind of a controversial thing between the three, all three of them. Which well, so, are you a Star Trek fan? Did you watch the others, the other movies or TV series or anything? Um, I, I grew up like watching Star Trek, like the older movies, and, and it's always been in my household. Like we're, we're a Star Trek family, I would say. Um, <laughs> But we, we actually like the J.J. Abrams one. It's like consistent in my family. We really like the first one. Second one we still like. I know there's, there's, there, it has its own things and its own re responses. Um, the third one, I don't know what it was. I, 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 just, I think maybe I went in with really high expectations. And that's one of the few films that I went in with high expectations. And it, I just didn't need it for me. You know the the first one I enjoyed. Uh, well, well, I'm I'm having fun watching these two guys have a panic attack over Pokemon or something. There's a Charmander nearby. <laughs> There's a Charmander. Yeah. And a Psyduck. Might have to stop uh, the podcast, but continue. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah. So so watching that first Star Trek, like I liked it. Okay, it's new. They set it up. Oh, alternate reality. Anything is possible. It's great. And then what do we see in the second one? Something that we've already seen before. But reversed. But, but yeah. Exactly. <laughs> just this. Anyway, so they so with the third one, it was new. It was new. It was you know, it was a, a space age we hadn't seen. It was you know this race we hadn't seen. Like all this mishmash of everybody you know, getting stuck. Like what well, was the trailer open up with? Like you got no ship, you got no crew. It's like the two like major points that people watch Star Trek for is to see the the crew doing shit and them on the ship going places. And they immediately like you lose both of them right away. Spoiler, um, but. Uh, yeah, but I, I just think it was, I, I liked it. I really liked to see something new, something that I wasn't uh, expecting. Yeah. I, I didn't like it that much. I guess I'm not a strong Star uh, Trek guy, but I will give it that they handled a, a cast and showing everyone equally very well. They, they gave everyone moments. They gave everyone um, good camera time. And I think that's, that's something that certain movies this year could have probably really uh, uh, needed in their movie. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give it that. It can be tough with these big like ensemble casts, yeah. to, you know, that... Joss Whedon's good at it. Yeah. No, he, he did a lot of the Fast and the Furious movies, right? So he has experience with the huge cast. <laughs> Joss Whedon? Yeah. What? No, no. He should do a Fast and the Furious. Yeah. No, the... <laughs> Start talking about cars. <laughs> yeah. I like that car. Um, I liked Warcraft. That came out this year. I saw Warcraft in the $3 oh. theater. Are you a big fan of the Warcraft universe? Yeah. I, I, Did you guys play the game? It, it took my life away, so I had to stay away from it. Um, I'm, so I'm yes. recovering from it. <laughs> it's just like going to it. watch someone else shoot a heroin after you just gave it Yeah, it's pretty yeah. much what it is. It's pretty much the whole time I'm screaming, like, leave! <laughs> Don't let it! Heard some, heard some eight year old tell his dad, hey, maybe we should play that. And I was like, no! <laughs> Start shaking him. No! You got so much to live for, kid! Yeah. You're doing like that, that Billy Madison, Go like, play sports. <laughs> 
<laughs> Cherish it. Cherish your free time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you liked it. Yeah. So it All was this nervous it, laughter you know, just involved it, in it. It, it was okay. And it did well, and I think it had a lot of room to like improve itself. And I hope it did. I think um, CG was good. Um, when I saw those those L's, they could have done a lot better making yeah. job. A lot better. I just job. appreciated the uh, the Asian elf that was uh, in the movie. <laughs> the first cast of uh, fictional characters. Yeah. So it it, it, it has like room. <laughs> it has room to grow. So hopefully it'll, it'll grow and, and do something good from the franchise because it did make money. It made 433 million. Mm. Uh, most of it was uh, foreign. China, I'll tell you that for sure. Because sure, 47 only domestic. Mm. So you, you had 300 come from uh, elsewhere. So. What about Finding Dory? Because I heard that was actually really good. I, actually, I haven't seen it. I did like it. Um, I think it hasn't really stuck with me as far. as a lot of the like the other movies um, but watching it it was it was very funny and I think it, it, it definitely had that balance between kids liking it and adults liking it there was a lot of jokes that I thought were hilarious and maybe you know kids would they, they can get when they're older but I did like it and it was it was very different than Finding Nemo so I think yeah that's what I was worried about yeah it, the journey is more of an emotional journey versus like Finding Nemo was like a physical journey like he's going to go find him whereas Dory's like finding herself it, it so was I do, I do I do like it a lot and I okay. recommend it it was the second highest rated movie this year for Rotten Tomatoes uh, viewership and um, critics critics were 94% viewers 87 it was the second highest and uh, funny fact the, the third the second um, the first highest is another animated movie that no one's gonna go see the which, first one? which is uh, yeah first one highest rated 96 and 91 uh, Kobo two strings I saw it last night how did you, you like it? it I loved it and I've been reading some mixed reviews but like to me, it was so charming. Um, if you play any sort of video games or watch any sort of anime or anything like that, all of the, the story beats are completely relatable. So the story is uh, a little boy has to collect the three samurai armor pieces and weapons. Like that's every single RPG that I've ever played and I loved it. I love seeing that and you have to go against the evil emperor Moon King. It's very, very charming. And I've never gotten goosebumps watching something just so pretty because you know that like it's all stop motion so everything was like painstakingly done and I, I still don't even understand how they use clay to make water in the ocean. Magnets. Okay. I think it's prettier than any Pixar movie I've ever seen. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I've, I've, seen, yeah, I've seen a lot of the... Three. Just go throw it out there. It was beautiful. <laughs> it, it wasn't as emotional as Pixar, but it was really fun to watch. It wasn't the first five minutes up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've seen a bunch of the behind the scenes uh, like little pictures or whatever for uh, for Kubo and it was it's amazing to watch all that I'm really having like flashbacks to like Nightmare Before Christmas and things like that and, uh, you know, those Tim Burton films something like tangible I mean like it's yeah. real but yeah. yeah I mean you could argue it still takes just as much time to yeah. produce them you know these animated films there's you know a couple years in the making yeah. but I mean it's I don't know. It's it's an art form that I don't see needing to yeah. go away. You know, it's something that doesn't. Computers aren't necessarily making it easier. Like you even know. there was a thing when I know they couldn't have done it with stop motion, and I literally think they used rear projection because it just still it looked a little sloppy at some point. But that's because one of the bad guys was glowing. So I think it was just like everything was still tangible. And the best part was it's not a spoiler. Their end credits showed all the work that they put into it with like this 12 foot giant skeleton and everyone doing uh, work on it just to make it move. I don't know, I love it. Yeah, I think Leica, the studio, because I've been to a couple of panels at Comic-Con for their previous movies, um, and they just come off so gen um, like genuine, and like they really put in the work. So I do give that to them completely. Um, I haven't seen all of their movies, and I, st I still have to see this one, but I think it's really, like, ris like I commend them for doing an art form that, t it, it does take a lot of effort, and yeah, they could just go CGI like everybody else, but it, it's got that neat, it's neat. Mm -hmm. And it's different. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's definitely on my list. So I'm glad to hear that it, <laughs> it, was, it was good. <laughs> it won't do well. Yeah, and, and it's unfortunate because it did open the lowest out of all of their movies. 
So I hope that it does well overseas and just at, in the total and probably on home video, like home video or I guess you would say streaming now and iTunes and that kind of thing. Um, that's what you got. I mean, that's what you got to hope for with these movies. Yeah. So it keeps their audience and they keep making them. The minute I left, I thought I'm going to buy the Blu-ray. That was my yeah. first thought. <coughs> the behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, opening weekend was 12.6 million for that movie. So not not, great. not 12.6 million opening weekend. So it it didn't do too well. It's actually the second second lowest opening weekend of the summer. Oh, that sucks. So that that kind of tells you a little bit of something how Thanks, it goes. Thanks, America. Yeah, but I mean, there's something Obama. to be there's something to be said about like when you look at just box office numbers. That doesn't really reflect on the quality of a movie. Oh, no, right? that's that's yeah. why I have the the, the critics reviews and things of like that because. But when you when you talk about success and when you talk about whether or not you're getting to see this movie, even though this movie might be critically acclaimed, mm-hmm. the people won't make a movie like this again if the money's not there. So, yeah, so you have to kind of say it. Yeah, I forget where I just saw it. It was like, <laughs> I want to say it was something from the UK. Somebody just made this list of like the 100 best movies ever and going down the list and like Children of Men was like number seven on the list or something like that, you know, but it's like a bunch of those movies that are all on there, like hardly any of them did good they did well whatever in the in the theaters you know the box office for for all of them was very very low but they're great films and it's it's unfortunate that to have something that's really well made really well put together that wasn't meddled and toyed with and all that you know you know it doesn't mean it's necessarily going to make money that's why you have you know transformers six or seven or whatever it is that's going to come out now yep that's true and um we have a. Uh, anyone see Alice through the Looking Glass? Nope. No. No one else did either. Okay. <laughs> Though it, 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 I think it made enough to uh, probably uh, get another movie because it was 170 was its a budget and it made uh, almost three million, three hundred worldwide. So it made almost double its money back. So. But worldwide. Worldwide, yeah. yeah. But they, they look at that sometimes and they they crunch the numbers and that might actually get you another. Another way to go. Um, comedies this year. Um, anyone see a good comedy this year that they would recommend to people? I mean, I, I would say um, I went and saw. I mean, I call it pop star, but it's like pop star never stops stopping with the Andy Samberg one. And I went in knowing it was going to be kind of quirky and weird. I, I guess I didn't know what exactly it would be, and I actually really liked it. It's like a documentary style. It's really silly. Um, and I'd actually recommend it. I, I want to say it came out on video recently, um, but I, I think it was funny. Like, and, and I will say there hasn't been like a laugh out loud like comedy for me in, re, uh, this year. Nothing that's really like got me like I loved that movie. It was hilarious throughout the film. But I will say I recommend Popstar. Yeah, it's quirky and fun and easy, easy an easy watch. Uh, one I did see and. I can't say I recommend, but um, I saw Sausage Party. Uh, we're gonna be Sausage talking, Party. Talking about animation and uh, comedy and that kind of thing. It was weird, and I think I was expecting. I, I like Seth Rogen. I like his crew. I love This Is the End and that kind of thing. And that was a great ensemble comedy. It was okay. Like, but um, if you ever want, if you want to see a really weird movie with a lot of swearing and animated food and some really graphic graphic scenes. Go go right ahead. It. And but, it's not uh, just violence; it's graphic, no, it's, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a different type of graphic. <laughs> There's that, an adult um, nature to some of the things yes, that happen. Yes, and it's yeah. all involving food, and it's all very weird. Um, but that was that was one of the weirder comedies I saw this year. I don't, I can't say it was that funny, but uh, it was definitely different. I was going to try and see it uh, this weekend. I was hoping to see it, see it before today so I could talk about it. But uh, just the, the one scene from the, the trailer where you have, like, the... I, I can't even remember what it was now, whatever. It was, like, a can of something where it's, like, the Saving Private Ryan kind of moment where it's on, like, a battlefield where you have... Oh, yeah, there's, like, it's like dropping like, flour. The yeah, flour so there's, like, dust or smoke, the whatever, yeah. And there's, like, mustard, and they're screaming, and it's, like, oh, no, and they're all cracked. It was, it was weird. Yeah. I'm not even going to It's, like, it the... Weird. Yeah, the scene this was a parody some war movie somewhere where it's like the guy's like trying to grab his intestines and scoop them up as they're spilling out of his stomach but it's like a can of spaghettios or something like that so he's you know his entrails are spilling out but what, what's that what you got on the Pokemon over there I leveled up okay <laughs> what, what are you at now 14 oh 14 huh master 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember bragging about 14, and I heard somebody across the room say, I'm 23. I'm like, you motherfuckers. Story of my life. Yeah. yeah. Um, speaking of disappointment, I guess Steven Spielberg's name doesn't carry doesn't carry as much weight as it used to. Uh, the BFG it didn't do really well. It didn't really do well. It just made its money back so far. Just made. It was 140 million to make and 153 uh, worldwide. But you think this was like Steven Spielberg like trying to say like, I wonder if I took something really crappy and wonder if I could make it good. <laughs> it like I wonder if they put my name on a piece of junk. It's like will it still make money? I, I, I think we don't, we don't, I mean, because it was a, uh, it was a Ronald, I always mess up last name, doll, 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 yeah, uh, a book, and I don't know about you guys, but I didn't, I know Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and that kind of thing, but I didn't really grow up with the BFG, the Big Friendly Giant. Yeah. I guess in the UK it was huge. I remember reading um, it, but not being into it. it like, exactly, yeah. and I think that the thing that sunk this movie too is it's creepy. The animation is creepy. It's like that uncanny valley, it's like kind of human, but not really kind of human. <laughs> And it, was just, it was just yeah. weird. So um, I know I I didn't really it didn't really attract me. Just the CG was kind of off, and I don't have that attachment to when I was younger reading those books and totally falling in love. So I know in the UK it blew up. In the US, I guess we, we all kind of thought that, and it was just kind of out there, and we don't have that attachment. It seems like it's most everything in this summer was trying to target one specific set of group, like a group of people who have. Was nostalgic over one single thing. Exactly. And I wasn't nostalgic for most of these things. Come on, Ninja Turtles, Suicide Squad, Batman. Well, Suicide Squad works for me. I mean, does it all feel it like it's through? they're really going after people that grew up in the '90s here? Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. you look at like between like Ninja Turtles to Independence Day, like. Yeah. I mean, one one thing uh, I saw when mapping out how much money this, these movies cost and how much money they made um, made me think to myself, uh, we need to make a horror movie. Because horror movies killed it, yep. money-wise. They, I mean, like, the, the price that they have <laughs> and the amount of money they can make is is ridiculous. Did anyone see a horror movie this year? I know Lights Out I wanted to see. I didn't get around to doing it because I was just too depressed from all the other movies coming out. Yeah, I mean, Lights Out, the original, the, the short that that was spawned from, was creepy. It's only like four minutes long or whatever, and that's spooky as shit. So, like, that's something I definitely think we should we'll try and see. Maybe we need to do... Uh, a horror episode as we get closer to uh, horror, horror. Uh, well, it's cool closer to like Halloween or something. But uh, yeah, like yeah. Um, Lights Out had a five million dollar budget. They made they made a hundred and eleven million. And it's still making money. Like it's still not, making it's money. It's not even near yeah, the end of the month. Like, still, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, still making money. They they I mean, and then The Conjuring, a forty million. And they're they're at three hundred million worldwide right now. I, I did see The Conjuring and when I went that theater was like sold out I'll say like I think horror movies I don't see a lot of them I think it's hard to find a really good horror movie and I mean sure you can go with the audience it's kind of fun because the jump scares everyone gets freaked out but they're just not that great I actually but, really hate seeing horror movies in theaters really? People, yeah. I can't stand it yeah. Yeah. people scream I can't yeah, it's like no reason yeah. it just freaks me out because it freaks me out because like not like the movie but people scream behind me like weird yeah. <laughs> but I heard The Conjuring too did well um, yeah it was, it was good it just came out hang but, or like some claustrophobic movie that there was a big line for when I went last night claustrophobia hang up or something oh the don't breathe don't breathe don't breathe, don't breathe. Don't breathe. Hang up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I guess that's about as close, scary as close. about as scary as you can make. Uh, you know, robbing a blind man. Yeah. Right, like that's that's what the movie's about. It, it's yeah, yeah it, it's a bunch it's of people. An hour and a half. Yeah, or trying to rob a blind I, I, I man. I saw a great meme this, this, uh, earlier about that movie. It was like Daredevil twenty years later is fucking intense. Keep that different bad day. All it takes is one bad day. <laughs> say, it kind of reminds me of um, the uh, uh, Arrested Development episode with Julie Louis Dreyfus as the attorney, she's pretending to be blind, to be blind yeah. and then they're trying to steal documents out of her house. So she's just walking around with a baseball bat, like randomly swatting things and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with the writer's watch. I think you're onto something. Yeah, I guess, man. Maybe you should watch the rest of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be scary. <laughs> there's a there's a pretty good movie, I guess, critic wise, to talk about movies who got good reviews and then making the nice guys. I've heard so much like good on that movie. Yeah. Like, so many good things. And I I unfortunately haven't seen it yet, but I know it just well, came out. Well, it's your fault that they they, they lose it. I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, how much money do you think they lost? 
Speaking made like what, thirty million on a sixty-five million dollar budget ish. Fifty million dollar budget, and it's it's minus fourteen million right now. Minus. Yep. Down fourteen. Down fourteen million. Down fourteen million. So there, there's a, there's another thing of like good movies, well done, well written, and well, people just don't want to see it. Not just like um, good movies, but uh, pro- or projects that aren't based on anything else. So this was like not an original ex- story, an original yeah. IP, like wasn't based on this, wasn't you know a remake, a reboot. And it is unfortunate, and I feel bad. I was I didn't see it, um, so I'm part of the problem. Way but to go! I, I call it as <laughs> it's all blamed on Nora. Yep, uh, I'll take it on this one. Uh, but um, yeah, so I think it's an unfortunate when you do see a really original movie and you just know it's not making that much money because you do want to see, see things like that in theaters doing well because you want them to keep making these movies um, and I'm a, I, like I said I was going to plug um, uh, Hell or High Water it's a phenomenal film it's by the same writer as Sicario I don't know if you guys have seen that but I love Sicario I thought it was great thriller really intense same kind of thing just in Texas so a lot more guns um, <laughs> well actually probably the same amount of guns as the cartel yeah. but very very good and I can't recommend it enough because this summer has been kind of dud up dud up dud and this one was like a breath of fresh air it gave me hope for the fall yeah. because I think the fall movies might I mean we still got like this is a completely different movie but like Doctor Strange Oh, yeah. Which you know we're hoping Marvel brings back. Um, <laughs> so there's, there's, I think there's still hope for this year. So that, that mean, gave me that gave me it inspired me to keep going and <laughs> using my Tuesdays to see movies, even though sometimes I come out dis- disappointed. <laughs> even if there's no more movies this year, I still think Civil War was so good. Yes. I'm happy with it this year. A sad fact I want to bring up about Civil War, I guess it's going to be complete off topic me talking about this, but um, Civil War, uh, does anyone here agree that it's the best Marvel movie they've done so far? Or close to it? It's pretty close. Yeah. It's pretty close to yeah. Yeah. it. It's only third money making. The first Avengers, actually fourth money making. The first Avengers, the second Avengers, and Iron Man 3 actually did better. So, um, yeah, and... Iron Man 3 was a monster. It's crazy. Uh, so it is, is... I wonder if... Is this that trend of people saying that superhero fatigue? Like, slowly, but surely the, the billions are going down. They still made, like, 900 billion. Or, or actually a billion. Uh, a trillion. Yeah. Yeah. But you look at, like, what Avengers represented of, like, you had all these individuals and now here they are together. That build-up, I don't think they're going to get it again. They're not going to introduce <laughs> ten more characters or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Rudging along. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. Do yeah. It. I mean, yeah. Infinity War might have it. Infinity War might have it. Especially if they introduce like the Guardians, yeah. meet the Avengers. Like if you just everybody. saw it that way, it'd be yeah. like, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. 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 everybody goes. Yeah. Well, the thing Which, too. Oh, no. Honestly, is that is that the plan? Is that the plan in, in, in ten years to have all these groups so. like merge in some big battle against Thanos? That's, 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 why would you not pity the universe? Not that. Yeah. Yeah. Like two years? Or, uh, to what? Like two Till years, Infinity years. Wars? Is, is so? Is, is that is that the tentative plan? I, I haven't heard any like yeah. yeah any plot point of like to have all of them come together. Or? I, I think they're supposed to yeah. at least in the part maybe part two maybe not part yeah. one they're gonna um, but everybody's gonna come together in space I assume. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, that's, that's how I pitch everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Space. <laughs> well, if you got like three of the, was it five rocks or six rocks? Like, they're probably gonna come to Earth. Of course, called stones. You got, you got enough. Of them. So, because <laughs> Doctor, actually, Doctor, uh, they, they say that Doctor Strange <laughs> is gonna introduce the Infinity Rocks. Then. Yes. <laughs> the, Doctor Strange is gonna introduce the last one. Yeah. So he, he, he's, he's yeah. probably gonna have the last one by himself. So a strange rock. It's gonna get there. Get the Infinity Stones. On my bad. Mm-hmm. But um, I think with superhero fatigue. The, the one thing I'm actually really glad I'm alive for the first run of all these things. Like the, 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 the first, first run, run. because oh, yeah. you know, like once okay, once you go to Infinity War and you do all these big baddies and stuff like that, what are they gonna do after? They still have a lot of stories. Yeah. And I mean, I, I don't read comics, and you guys probably know a lot more of the side stories that they can do. But realistically, you guys. You think it's 2025 till we see the reboot of the that's Avengers? That's what I'm oh, saying. Yeah. Like, and then as the actors get older Spider-Man and older, 9. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like they're, they're going to keep rebooting. They're going to keep doing it. So superhero fatigue is something you're just going to have to deal with. Um, but I am glad to be alive right now for the first run of all these movies, and you see the first of it. And you, this is kind of like where where are where is Marvel going to go? Where are these superhero movies going to go when they face all their really big baddies? Well, if they if, if they stay true to the comics, they're just going to. 
already do them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 they've already rebooted uh, the comic <laughs> universe. So and more minorities yeah. make people younger. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. They've, yeah. so they've got yeah. like yeah. 50, 60 years of comic book universe already just with Marvel. And then they have the now the, re- the reboot of everything. So they could be making movies for 50 more years till the format changes, till we go to start watching something else. VR. Yeah. So Hopefully DC will get, get better on the way. We'll find out. By the time VR movies come around, exactly. hopefully, yeah. So we're, we're past the halfway mark, so let's introduce um, a top 10. We'll, we won't, I won't make you guess all top 10, but top 10 money makers, I guess you would say, of this year. Who thinks, who, who guessed number one? Who has number one? Best number one money maker? Money maker this year. Yeah. Civil Ninja War? I, I it's probably not Civil War or Ninja Turtles. I, I, you know you're close. Uh, Fanny, Fanny Dory. Yeah. Uh, number one, Fanny sense. Dory. And even though it made less than Civil War, slightly, I think the budget helps bring it up to number one. Um, and then Civil War is number two, actually. Wow. So, and no, if you want to say of the year, um, Jungle Book was number three. I know Jungle Book's probably, everyone kind of forgot about that one. But that was number three. Yeah, and that's not even like, like the second. first like remake or retelling of the Jungle Jungle Book at that point. No, no. And uh, you had to go pretty far down before you find another summer movie before you get there. I guess Life of Pets is five, and then you got like literally uh, Suicide Squad at eight. The fact that it's eight. Just eight. Makes me yeah, angry. yeah. It just makes me angry. Yeah, Star Trek's on there at ten. Really amazing. Okay. Damn. So it. You know, it, it tells you something. Funny Dory actually did really well, and it broke a lot of records. Number one animation. Yes. Number one animation. Um, number one rated G or PG movie. And then... Um, um, seventh overall. I, I, will, I will tell you a bad thing about Finding Dory, though. Um, uh, even though I said it was a very good movie, I uh, answered the question of what is the number one animated movie box office? Got it right at the theater, and I got a Suicide Squad poster. This was before the movie came out, though. So at the first, I was excited. I kept the poster. It still rolled up because I wanted to keep it nice, just in case I enjoyed the movie. So then I could put the poster on my wall. Um, the poster is still rolled up. If you guys want it, or if you know somebody, or I'm someone here saw it twice. It. So that's maybe, true. That's maybe true. he likes um, it. So that's really the negative with Finding Dory. Is that we can give it away as a gift. Exactly. If somebody wants to email NoTownNerds at gmail.com, we can give it away. There's a Suicide Squad poster <laughs> ready for you. Like, you can take <laughs> it. Full size? For you. It is full size. It's wow. a nice poster. I want it because I do want it. There's also, I also have tattoos. I might still use them um, because, you know, tattoos. like All these around the corner. Exactly. Of what? Yeah. Suicide Squad. Of Suicide Squad tattoos. are like little icons. Do they say, like, damaged? Uh, there is not a damaged one. <laughs> well, forget it. Put that on the movie poster. So I don't, I don't know if I want to get rid of the tattoos at this point. Like, I didn't hate it that much that I would get rid of, like, temporary tattoos. But those might be might be in there. Like, But the poster, definitely. Still all nice and rolled up. I didn't burn it. I didn't throw it away. Are there going to be a bunch of Jared Leto? <laughs> Jokers? Uh, Jokers is, is I can't see that. I can't see it. I like, can't see when it. The Dark Knight There's going to be a million um, uh, Harley Quinns, but no, I don't think it'll be Jokers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we get that too. I'm really cool with that too. <laughs> I think short shorts have to do with that, but that's just me. Um, yeah, no. In, I'll tell. Let me tell you some of the achievements from our these favorite movies. Um, <laughs> Suicide Squad actually got number one um, on this opening ever. That means nothing. You know who you know who you know who you beat? Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh yeah. Push Guardians of the Galaxy number two. This makes you sad. Yeah. I'm I'm, I'm like the I'm, reason. Sorry. I'm like, I'm sorry. and I'm, I'm disappointed in Nick because he helped get it yeah, there. I'm sorry. Like he helped get it there with your twice. <laughs> Did you see it twice in one week. So twice. No. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, you helped to get to yeah. more milestones, <laughs> and I'm disappointed. My my disappointed movie, Teenage uh, Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, Made uh, 240 million, so uh, it it made 100 more million than it cost. So uh, you might see another one of those. Unfortunately, um, Matt's was Independence Day, right? Yeah. You're gonna see another Independence Day movie. 165 million to make, 382 worldwide. You're gonna it made, it super made excited. Two, over 200 million. You're gonna see another one. They're gonna go to space. They're gonna fight aliens in space. That's what should have happened in the second one. We should have gone after them. <laughs> <laughs> Take the fight to them. Exactly. <laughs> that's, literally, that's literally the words at the end of the movie. Wait. That's literally the words at the yeah. end of the did movie. Did you guys see the movie? Yeah. I did. I, I told right. you. They spent 20 years preparing and they get their ass handed to them in seconds. Yeah. 20 years of preparing, they put a shield on the on the F-18. Is that yeah. like <laughs> the beginning of the movie? Or the yeah. It's like, the, it's like 10 minutes into the movie, they get their like underwear pulled over their head, essentially. <laughs> like... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like it's just, it's such a, 
Uh, God, I don't know. There was there was so much more that they talk about, like offhandedly in the movie that I would rather have seen. Talked about like these gangs in in Africa fighting hand to hand with the aliens. I want to see that, that movie. Was cool. yeah. That, that would have been cool. awesome, right? That's a movie. That like think cool. of like District Nine, like yeah. on that level of that's, like them that's fighting what they the were aliens. Going for, I yeah. Think. yeah, yeah. They've yeah. lost their their machines or whatever. They just have whatever was on the big machete. Yeah. Two of them. Two big machetes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, you know, uh, and I say um, we guys think it was the worst losing movie so far this year. What's lost the most? Worst. We lost the most. The most, most money. Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> so far right now, um, it could make a little bit more, but so far right now, Ben Hur. Oh, that's by, not surprising. By a huge, huge, huge what did margin. What it cost though? to make? Hundred million dollars. It cost hundred million dollars, and the cast is like a no-name cast. I, 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 I still, I still think it's it's going to be number one, no matter what, because I mean, opening weekend was eleven point two million. The second lowest, and right now it's down seventy-three million dollars. It has one week, one week to go. I mean, it only had been out one week, but I think, I think that's a huge hit. This is their bet that they lost when they were like, people are religious, they're gonna want to see. Okay, let's make like Jesus a more important character. Let's give him a bunch of lines. But we have this other cast. Ah, oh, don't worry about. It. Don't worry about. It. Put a cherry raisin. Ah, oh, it's not that great. Ah, oh, don't worry about it. It's fine. They'll come. We gave Jesus a lot of talking lines. Didn't work out for them, and I mean, but Morgan Freeman million. has dreadlocks in this. So. Oh, maybe that's what got them 11 million. Yeah, that's where that's <laughs> but, where all the money went was but, to pay Morgan but Freeman to wear But a hundred million dollars for that. That, that's when you're like, that's that's the tax money. That's the tax evasion money. <laughs> the funding. Hollywood so, accounting. So I'll put money on it right now that, that they'll still play the old Ben Hur. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. I don't oh. think they're going to think about this no, one. Never, no, Is no. it Easter? When do they play Ben Hur? Like, Probably Easter. Right? Probably Easter. Probably Easter. No, no Catholics at this this table? No, nobody? No. no. Or ca Christian? Sorry. We don't whatever, watch AMC. Whatever. <laughs> I'm a failed Catholic. <laughs> Um, number two, which probably won't stand this way, is, is Club O's no. Two Strings. And the Two Strings, it's it's down 43 right now. You tried me. You only tried. one, yeah. though. <laughs> only one again. more time, Nick. I'm you just gotta go one more time. Well, I'm gonna watch it again. Two more times. It's only yeah, two more one, times. so <laughs> it, it might climb the, the ladder. Maybe my $10 will help those box office numbers. Um, and maybe this podcast. Get the word out there. Exactly. <laughs> Everybody go Doing see it. I'm gonna, I'll, by next time, my next podcast, I'll have seen it. I'm gonna right. go see it, too, actually, after his My next podcast, I'm gonna say I'm gonna watch it, probably won't watch it. Sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna have a lot of free time. Number three, no surprise, I brought it up earlier. Uh, the Nice Guys down 14 million. It's out of theater, so it's gonna be down 14 million. Um, number four was My Running Horse, Nine Lives. Nine Lives. Uh, that movie's down 13 million dollars. The lowest review, uh, 44, uh, nine percent by uh, critics. Lowest review, 9% by critics. I mean, how much, how much did it cost? How much did it cost to make that movie? 30 million. 30 million for a movie about a talking cat with Kevin Spacey. Yep. 30 million. You know, that's their fault. That's their fault. I'm kind of like, maybe I should check this out. <laughs> <laughs> I, kind of, you know, I kind of want to see it because I've heard so All of it's on bad. the screen. All of it's on the screen. I don't know. I, I like Moon and I had Kevin Spacey as a talking robot. I, that, that was enjoyable. Maybe this thing will be right using that logic. Just, I can just I go, just go in into there. that. Yeah. 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 It'll be fine. Everything be fine. Number five, and actually the worst performing on all of them, period, hands down, pop star. Which is such a shame because it's cute. I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest right now. I have no idea what this movie is. I never. I've seen the title. I've never seen a single <laughs> advertisement have, have for it. Have you seen SNL's That's the problem. Yeah. yeah. That's the movie. It's a digital short. It's a very long digital short. That's funny and does deserve to be that low. Just you know, pretend that 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 guy made a career out of all those songs, and that's the movie. That's the movie. It's it's um, 20 million to make it. It only made uh, 9.5 million. Yeah, at the worst opening weekend of uh, four point six million dollars. So I tried, it, guys. It didn't lose as much as some of them, but it, it got. <laughs> you did your part. Got, I, I did my part. It, it, reviews are pretty average. It's like a seventy percent, which for a comedy, I feel like, is, is decent. Pretty decent. You, you know, basically, comedy is is only good if you don't like it. Like, you know, if you don't like it or you do like it, just whoever works. It. So, um, but to have that kind of numbers that you're not gonna see that again, you, you might not see that guy in the movie. <laughs> he might stick to. Um, Sandberg will be fine. <laughs> he'll stick to his show. Her Brooklyn Nine Nine is doing pretty well. Yeah, there you go. Really yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you probably won't see him in the movie for a while. So uh, yeah, disappointing. I'm going to go.
But yep, that's the the top five biggest losers. Um, and a lot of the bad ones are on top still. So and things like Ghostbusters are probably gonna get the sequel, made money. You know, so uh, how much did it make internationally? Internationally, Ghostbusters made. I uh, I really wanted Ghostbusters to do well. Ghostbusters. I, yeah, we all wanted want Ghostbusters it, to, I want be it good. to be good. <laughs> I wanted it to. Uh, only made about eighty uh, uh, worldwide because worldwide is two hundred eight million and domestic was one hundred twenty four. So, yeah, not not the forty six was the opening weekend, so not not too bad. Do you think it'd done better if it had uh, two guys, two girls, two guys? No, because I feel no, like that was a huge problem. I haven't too. seen it, so I can't really no. give you. Well, like, when, an I honest say, <laughs> when I say do better, I mean like. I'm not saying two guys would help anything. I meant like would the reviews and the criticism going in would, would have been better. No, I think it would have been better if they had um, not really relied on the older movies as much. Like the trailer was basically making it seem like it was kind of a continuation when really it wasn't. It's like the same universe kind of not really actually it's not even really the same universe. It's um, it's a reboot. I mean So there's no reference want, at all to the other movies? There's there's little hints of it and they have the little thing but they I thought like was Murray, when, Yeah, uh, I don't know if you if you thought this But was as a real Ghostbuster or is he, no, like, he's just a now. character. So there's like cameo, like, cameos, rep, like references, but not. Yeah, yeah okay. Um, but it was. What am I trying to say? I mean, now? It, it still has some problems because there's a lot of yeah. controversy about yeah. involving it. And that's actually one reason why I wanted to watch it because yeah. I wanted to see if if it really was that bad. Is it because it's four women? They're, they're the reason they ruined it? It was the bad writing no, that ruined it? Was bad it. Directing, it was bad directing, editing, bad filmmaking. So, yeah. Women had nothing to do with that, that yeah. being bad. I mean, well, they, they are all f- well, funny I think people, I, funny ladies. I love, love them yeah, on love SNL, them. I, I but like, I don't think that they were the reason why that movie didn't work. Well, I, I think it had to, because you had people, you know, crapping this thing out before it aired, before but anyone the, the saw it. The trailers yeah. weren't good. The advertising wasn't oh, yeah. good. That's, yeah. I think that's ultimately people went in with this expectation, and it was a different movie. It wasn't well, the same the, the, the moment they announced the, the movie, people yeah. hated it. Oh, yeah. So I, I, I don't think it... It was, it was it was set up to fail well, anyway. because it didn't, but it was set up to fail. I mean, the the moment that like we saw the you know Harold Ra- Harold Ramis died, like everyone knew we're not getting another Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. That like that that's sort of like that's the moment that like we've yeah. lost that that comedic light. You know, the, uh, and Harold Harold Ramis is a funny funny guy, and it's you know it's, it's sad to see see that he, he went when he did, but like that's that's pretty much what it what it meant. But if it was you know Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis, the two of them could have you know sped it a movie years ago, but it's to get a uh, you know studio or somebody to back it or whatever. But I, I mean, at that point, when he's no longer involved, Dan Aykroyd can't handle the series on his own. You know, and then Bill Murray, who, who the fuck knows what that guy's got going on? They're like, he's not, he's yeah, not into it really. He's yeah. only into the things that he's into. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so I mean, it's been off all the time. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it, you know, the ideal thing would have would have been to maybe see like, oh, here's these guys. They used to be Ghostbusters, but now they're you know retired or whatever. They can't keep up. So here's this next generation of Ghostbusters or whatever. Or like, you know, the original plan was to talk about like alternate d- dimensions and realities and having like. Like, Ghostbusters was like this franchise system. They easily could have done that. They could have said, oh, here's Ghostbusters 3, here's the L.A. branch, and it's run by these four ladies, and it could have been their own thing, or they're starting it up on their own, and it could have still had that respect to what happened in New York, but here's our new thing. That would have been fine. Well, see, I can write it right there. I think it was confused. I think everybody was confused on that movie as far as yeah. what they wanted to accomplish. But is there a cat in there voiced by Kevin Spacey? That's all I care about. <laughs> all yeah. Yeah. Ultimate <laughs> reality is anything can happen. <laughs> so it's a ghost cat. Um, so what's coming next? What what are we looking forward to here? We've got some, some Halloween movies, got some scary things coming up. Uh, Disney to save the day, basically. Yeah. I think Star Disney's going to end up with all of the top grocers. I mean, they have Jungle Book, Jungle Book, Zootopia, Civil War, Story. They, they pretty much own it. Like, this, I give them this year. Like, yeah. Making their mouth money. Yeah, they're, they're keeping it going. So, yeah, Doctor Strange. Um, I don't know. I mean, Rogue One. Star Wars, Disney. Yeah. Star Wars Story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I mean that's gonna be all all new. It's all original, right? Something we haven't seen. It's gonna see a little more, a little more fighting. I know that should be. Is Deadpool coming back next year? Or is it two years from now? Two years. Two years. Two years? Yeah. So, okay, well, what do you think about the the Blair Witch? This uh, it's supposed to be a sequel, right? I, I think that might be another unnecessary. Do we really need it? 
<laughs> it's gonna make a lot of I heard the director was good. I don't know how to explain it. I haven't seen it. <laughs> the first one, for what it was, like, everything, like, it was such a crazy viral marketing, whatever you want to call it, of, like, that was great. It was great for at that time. I remember getting a prom promo, like, VHS tape from New Rock 104 that it was, like, literally, like, a eight-minute VHS tape that just had this little short that they made on there, and it was, it was some promotion that was going on, but, um, but I mean, I don't think it's going to come anything anywhere near what the other one was. I should have done that for The Ring. Which is also coming out now, another yeah. sequel. They're doing another yeah. Ring? Yeah. yeah. No. Which is like a, it's like a viral video like that. It's all digital. Yeah. It's like watching it on YouTube. Yeah, I, I, I watched uh, the trailer the other day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is yeah. that really it for this year, then? Like, does... I mean, Doctor Strange in, in uh, November and yeah. yeah. Unless it's you like horror movies in October, it's pretty much it. That's yeah. where you gotta go. So mm -hmm. I mean Star Wars is big enough. Why not? Yeah. So why not? So, yeah, I don't know, man. I I, uh, I used to spend a lot of money on movies, and I feel like I'm not really doing it anymore. I don't know if it's just because, like, I work this weird shift where I, I, I got to go, go to bed super early to get up super early. I don't know. Do you guys like going to the movie by yourself or with yeah. somebody? Or? I, I, I just started. I feel like last year, that was the year I was like, I'm going to do things by myself. So I started going. I actually really like it. Um, I, I really, really enjoyed Kung Fu Panda 3 because I walked into the theater and I saw it by myself with nobody. And it was the comfy seats with a little table. And it was amazing. So I really do like it. Um, but I go, if a friend wants to go, I'm like, hey, I'm down. I'm down to see anything. Unfortunately, this year, it's kind of hurt me. But, uh, but um, I mean, I, I still have hope, but I'm still gonna go. I, I like doing it, and I like being able to talk about it, even when it's like I'm railing on a movie. It's still fun to talk about. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like like going to the theater, like part of the fun is like going with somebody, going going to have that that shared experience, especially like afterward to be able to talk about it and things right. like that. I mean, you know, there's years that uh, you know we would go and go see a movie midnight somewhere, and it'd be two two thirty three in the morning, sitting at Denny's talking about it, drink, drinking coffee all night. That was like a, a staple of like our uh, late teens early, early 20s right there but um, but some new additions come into town maybe the next year or so out, uh, theaters that serve alcohol yeah is yeah. that definite they've, they've filed they they filed their licensing whatever yeah so we'll wait and see what happens there but uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or a great idea, okay. right? Yeah. I think yeah. it depends. Like, are you gonna? Are they gonna cut people off? Like, it's like, sir? No, 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 no. Yeah, like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how does like the Alamo Draft House work? Right. I mean, they serve yeah. food. Have you ever been? Yeah. I mean, yeah. so what do they do? Do they let you, yeah. you just get up and go pee? The no, they have people come in and bring you drinks. Like they have like people like actively waiting inside the theater that will bring you, uh, will get whatever you need. Do so, they cut you off? Because I mean, I'm sure there's some people that I mean, unfortunately would be like, yeah, hit me another, and then like. I'm sure they would cut you off, but I didn't get to that point. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, are you ever? Yeah, a problem. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's gotta be like a, like you gotta have to go see maybe something you've already seen or right. something that like doesn't really like you're not paying attention to the story because we've all been there you have a couple drinks and suddenly you need to pee yeah. and you have to pee right now and so it's like you're, you're gonna you're gonna need to leave there's no there's no gonna the time on uh, your run pee app where it's gonna tell you when you can go that's gonna be uh, worth it I think at that point yeah but. it's gonna come out of a drunken stupor and have a fistful of suicide ticket stubs why we was worth it the guy's back again oh man <laughs> So, all right, well, it looks like we're uh, coming to the end, the end of our hour here. Um, Let's thank Crazy Squirrel for hosting us again. Yeah, thank yeah. It's always great. <laughs> yeah, we got a little noisy in, in some parts, maybe. You know, people getting excited, playing their... I, I can't remember what was going on today. D&D. D&D yeah, D &D Adventures is the uh, thing, yeah. But, but thank uh, you very much, Crazy Squirrel. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, so you can find us where? Anybody remember where, where can you see us or no. hear us? That was not uh, my job. Yeah. I was not assigned that. I had numbers. Yeah. <laughs> YouTube and Stitcher and iTunes and Twitter and Facebook and all that fun stuff. So like and subscribe and yeah. So what's what's next? What's next episode? My hate food yeah. review of Happy Feet. <laughs> Sir, you need to leave. <laughs> Comes by. Yeah. Yeah. How my third time. Since building a side squad was uh, <laughs> <laughs> Third time's a charm, guys. Yeah. Third time. It all comes together. <laughs> <laughs>